This is the reading of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Chapter 1. The Boy Who Lived Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they didn't hold such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large moustache. Mrs. Dursley was a thin and blonde, and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful, as she spent much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbours. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters. Mr. and Mrs. Potter. Miss Potter was Mrs. Dursley's sister, but they haven't met for several years. In fact, Mrs. Dursley pretended she didn't even have a sister, because her sister and her good-for-nothing husband were as undursleyish as it was possible to be. The Dursleys shuddered to think what the neighbors would say if the Potters arrived in the street. The Dursleys knew that the Potters had a small son, too, but they never had even seen him. This boy was another good reason for keeping the Potters away. They didn't want Dudley mixing with a child like that. When Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on the dull grey Tuesday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon happen in all of the country. Mr. Dursley hummed as he picked out his most boring type of work, and Mrs. Dursley gossiped away happily as she wrestled a screaming Dudley into his high chair. None of them noticed a large, tawny owl flutter past the window. At half past eight, Mr. Dursley picked up his briefcase pecked Miss Dursley on the cheek, and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye, but missed, because Dudley was now having a tantrum and throwing his cereal at the walls. Little tyke, chortled Mr. Dursley as he left the house. He got into his car and backed out of the number four's drive. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something peculiar, a cat reading a map. For a second, Mr. Dursley didn't realize what he had seen. Then he jerked his head around to look again, where was a tabby cat standing on the corner of Privet Drive, but there wasn't a map in sight. But what could he have been thinking of? It must have been a trick of the light. Mr. Dursley blinked instead of the cat. It stared back as Mr. Dursley drove around the corner and up the road. He watched the cat in his mirror. It was now reading the sign that said Privet Drive. No! Looking at sign. Cats couldn't read maps or signs. Mr. Dursley gave himself a little shake and put the cat out of his mind. As he drove toward town, he thought of nothing except a large order of drills he was hoping to get that day. But on the edge of town, drills were driven out of his mind by something else. As he sat in the usual morning traffic jam, he couldn't help but noticing there seemed to be a lot of strangely dressed people about. People in cloaks. Mr. Dursley couldn't bear people dressed in funny clothes. The gaps you saw on the young people. <laughs> he supposed this was some sort of stupid new fashion. He drummed his fingers on the steering wheel and his eyes fell on the huddle of these weirdos standing close by. They were whispering excitedly together. Mr. Dursley was enraged to see that a couple of them weren't even young at all. Why, that man had to be older than he was, wearing an emerald green cloak. The nerve of him. Then it struck Mr. Dursley that this was probably some silly stunt. These people were obviously collecting for something. Yes, that would be it. The traffic drove on and on for a few minutes, and then Mr. Dursley arrived in the Grunnings parking lot, his mind back on the drills.
Mr. Dursley sat with his back to the window in his office on the ninth floor. If he hadn't, he might have found it harder to concentrate on drills that morning. He didn't see the owls swooping past in the broad daylight. The people down the street did. They pointed and gazed open mouthed as an owl after owl sped overhead. Most of them had never seen an owl even in the night time. Mr. Dursley, however, had a perfectly normal owl free morning. He yelled at five different people. He made several important telephone calls and shouted a bit more. He was in a very good mood until lunchtime when he thought he'd stretch his legs and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the bakery. He forgot all about the people in cloaks until he passed a group of them next to the bakers. He eyed them angrily as he passed. He didn't know why, but they made him uneasy. This bunch were whispering excitedly too, and he couldn't see a single collecting tin. He was on his way back past them, clutching a large doughnut in a bag, that he caught a few words of what they were saying. The potters! That's right, that's what I heard. Yes, their son, Harry. Mr. Dursley stopped dead, fear flooding him. He looked back at the whispers as if he wanted to say something to them, but he thought better of it. He dashed across the road and hurried to the office, snapped at his secretary, trying not to disturb him, seized his telephone, and had almost finished dialing his home number when he changed his mind. He put the receiver back down and stroked his moustache, thinking, no, he was being stupid. Potter wasn't such an unusual name. He was sure there were lots of people called Potter who had a son called Harry. Come to think of it, he wasn't even sure his nephew was Harry. He never even seen the boy. It might have been Harvey or Harold. There was no point in worrying Mrs. Dursley. She always got so upset at the mention of her sister. He didn't blame her. If he had that sister, well, but all the same, those people in cloaks. He found it a lot harder to concentrate on the drills that afternoon, and when he left the building at five o'clock, he was so worried that he walked straight into someone just outside the door. Oh, sorry, he grunted as the tiny old man stumbled and almost fell. It was a few seconds before Mr. Dursley realized that the man was also wearing a violet cloak. He didn't seem at all upset at almost being knocked to the ground, though. On the contrary, his face split into a wide smile, and he said in a squeaky voice that made passerby stare. Don't worry, my dear sir, for nothing could upset me today. Rejoice! For you know who has gone at last. Even muggles like yourself should be celebrating this happy, happy day. The old man hugged Mr. Dursley around the middle and walked off. Mr. Dursley stood rooted to the spot. He had been hugged by a complete stranger. He also thought he had been called a muggle, whatever that was. He was rattled. He hurried to his car and set off for home, hoping he was imagining things which he had never hoped before because he didn't approve of imagination. As he pulled into the driveway of number four, the first thing he saw, and it did not improve his mood, was that the tabby cat he'd spotted that morning. It was now sitting in his garden wall. He was sure it was the same one. It had the same markings around its eyes. Shoo! said Mr. Dursley loudly. The cat didn't move. It just gave him a stern look. Was this normal cat behavior? Mr. Dursley wondered. Trying to pull himself together, he led himself into the house. He was still determined not to mention anything to his wife. Mrs. Dursley had a nice normal day, she told him over dinner, all about Mrs. Nextdoor's problems with her daughter and how Dudley learned a new word. Won't. Mr. Dursley tried to act normally when Dudley had... Been put to bed, he went into the living room in time to catch the last report on the evening news. And finally, bird watchers everywhere have reported that the nation's owls have been behaving very unusually today. Although owls normally hunt at night and are hardly ever seen in daylight, there have been hundreds of sightings of these birds flying in every direction since sunrise. Experts are unable to explain why the owls have suddenly changed their sleeping pattern.
the newscaster allowed himself to grin. Most mysterious. Now over to Jim McGuffin with the weather. Going to be any more showers of owls tonight, Jim? Well, Ted, said the weatherman. I don't know about that, but it's not the only owls that have been acting oddly all day. Viewers, as far as Kent, Yorkshire, and Dundee, have been phoning in to tell me that instead of rain, I promised yesterday. They had a downpour of shooting stars. Perhaps people have been celebrating bonfire night early. It's not until next week, folks, but I can promise a wet night tonight. Mister Dursley sat frozen in his armchair, shooting stars all over Britain. Owls flying by daylight, mysterious people in cloaks all over the place, and a whisper, a whisper of the Potters. Mrs. Dursley came into the living room carrying two cups of tea. It was no good. He had to say something to her. He cleared his throat nervously.、Uh, Petunia, dear, you haven't heard from your sister lately, have you? As he expected, Mrs. Dursley looked shocked and angry. After all, they normally pretended she didn't have a sister. No, she said sharply. Why? Funny stuff on the news. Mister Dursley mumbled, "Owl shooting stars, and there were a lot of funny-looking people in town today." So, snapped Missus Dursley. Well, I just thought maybe it has something to do with, you know, her crowd. Missus Dursley sipped her tea through her pursed lips. Mister Dursley wondered whether he dared tell her he heard the name Potter. He decided he didn't dare. Instead, he said as casually as he could, "The son, he'd be about Dudley's age now, wouldn't he?" "I suppose so," said Mrs. Dursley stiffly. "What was his name again? H- Howard, was it?" "Harry, nasty common name, if you ask me." "Oh yes," said Mr. Dursley, his heart sinking horribly. "Yes, I quite agree." He didn't say another word on the subject as they went upstairs to bed. While Mrs. Dursley was in the bathroom, Mr. Dursley crept into the bedroom window and peered down to the front garden. The cat was still there. It was staring down Privet Drive as though it was waiting for something. Was he imagining things? Could all this have anything to do with the Potters? If it did, if it got out that they were related to a pair of, well. He didn't think he could bear it. The Dursleys got into bed. Miss Dursley fell asleep quickly, but Mister Dursley lay awake, turning it all over in his mind. His last comforting thought before he fell asleep was that even if the Potters were involved, there was no reason for them to come near him and Missus Dursley. The Potters knew very well that he and Petunia followed them, and their kind. He couldn't see how he and Petunia could get mixed up in anything that might be going on. He yawned and turned over. It couldn't affect them. How very wrong he was.